Very good morning. I welcome all to those who are online. Yeah, we'll get started. Um, so last class we dealt with the topic of angels, uh, and uh, on-campus students were not there for that. Uh, but I hope that you go back to that video and uh, catch up on whatever you have missed. So uh, today we will be looking at the doctrine of the end times. What does the scripture have to say about the very last days, uh, just before the coming, you know, the second coming of Christ, and also the time of tribulation and all of that. So we will be looking more at the doctrinal side of it. Uh, so in the second year, you would have a separate course on the end times when you would be taken through the entire timeline, uh, the chronological event events so it will be taking place so that would be dealt with in detail in your second year course but today we will be putting more at the doctrinal side of the end times that's the focus for today uh, so to start off with an introduction just to kind of get this whole thing you know into perspective uh, why are we even look at, looking at this whole topic of end times what should be the bigger picture that we should be having in our minds, even as we uh, think about the last days and the end times? When God first created the universe and when he created humans, he had a specific purpose and plan in his mind. So we need to think about the end times from that uh, beginning perspective, where God actually created everything because he had something in mind. And now everything is leading towards these last days with the same plan and purpose that God had already established right in the beginning. So why? Why were we even created? Why was the universe even kept in place? Why was it even made? So we need to go back to the very beginnings to see what God had in mind. And when we study this last ending times, we would look at this whole thing in the perspective of what God already had in his mind. In the very very beginning so just to uh, you know grasp uh, what god has in his mind maybe we can just begin first by looking at acts chapter 17 24 to 25. so acts 17 24 to 25 if we could have one person read out Say so with you, our Lord God, he's not served by human hands as if he needed anything. In fact, he is the one who gives our life and breath and everything else to the things that he has created. So creation was never made because he needed creation. Human beings were not created because he required human beings to attend to him and serve him and look after him. That is not a purpose at all of creation. Uh, rather, we see that he is the source of all life and he has created all of this for his own purposes. We see, see that in Colossians chapter 1. Verse 16. So if someone could read out Colossians 1 16. Says you all things have been created through him and for him. So he has some eternal purpose in mind for this creation. He has an eternal purpose in mind for humans. Uh, and so uh, when we look at the end times, we are looking at uh, the end times through his eyes. What purposes does he have in his mind you know, for the last days? Uh, 
you look at another scripture, First John chapter three, verse First John three. So the full details of what would uh, happen in the very end is not for us because it says over here what we will be has not yet been made known. But one thing we do know that when Christ appears, we shall be like him. So all along from the time that God made humans in his image, he had an eternal purpose for them, which extends beyond the end days. It goes beyond the end days into eternity. So we do not yet know uh, what we will be made into. It says okay, what we will be has not yet been made. All that we have been told is that we will be conformed to the image of Christ. So God has got something eternal in his heart for us. And in fact, we see God touching upon that, you know, Jesus touching upon that uh, in John 15, 15. So if someone could read out John 15, 15. Yeah, so here Jesus says, you know, no longer I am your servant, now you are friends. And so I'm going to be sharing with you all the things that my father has revealed to me. So, you know, he starts to reveal to them things about salvation, things about uh, righteous living and all of that. Uh, and now, so beyond, now when we go into the end times and beyond that, the Lord will also be revealing to us things that we would need to know regarding the next phase of our life with him. Okay, so those things are not revealed to us right now, but a time will come when even those things will be revealed to us. So there is a lot more coming in the end times, and we are supposed to be looking forward to that with excitement. Uh, so uh, three reasons why we in fact are studying about the end times. Yeah, it says here that the audio is not clear and there's an info if you can somewhat take care of that. In the meantime, you know, if you can have someone read out 1 Thessalonians 4, 13 and 18. 1 Thessalonians 4, 13 and 18. So the is the bottom one now. What's the echo effect still there? So I'll write that in that you read. Yeah, they say that it's still quite in their phone. Would this help uh, those of us who are online? Is it clearer or do you still feel an echo from the phones? We looked at voice of the surroundings before, verses 13 and 18. And we see that one reason why we are informed by God about the end times is so that we will not feel bad when our loved ones pass away. We'll continue to have the assurance that we will meet with them once again and we will spend eternity with them. So we God has told us about the end times that we will have this hope, this eternal hope, that we will not be separated from them and that there is a future beyond this death. That's one of the reasons why we are told about the end times. We also read about the end times so that we can encourage one another 
because when we look in the book of Revelation, we see that ultimately justice is done. God sees to it that righteousness, the people who are righteous, will receive their reward. Those who have been wicked and evil will pay the price. They will not escape. Nobody will escape from even one wrong doing that they have done. Full justice will be granted. So these are all things which give us assurance. Uh, so yeah, even as I'm uh, now speaking, is the echo better? Uh, is the is the sound normal? Or uh, did they need to do anything further at this end? post and say whether it has improved at all or whether something more needs to be done. All right, so I'll just continue with the feedback. There's also a third reason why we um, talk about the end times. Not, uh, uh, let us, yeah, so uh, they're saying that the echo is still there. Kind of difficult to reach with so much activity going on here. So, yeah, uh, Second Timothy chapter 2, verses 11 and 12. If someone can read out Second Timothy 2, 11 and 12. Talks about us reigning with God. Talks about us, you know, ruling in the heavenlies along with Him. So, uh, what, which exact, which, which part of the end times is it talking about? Is it talking about the millennium period when people will, uh, you know, maybe get to rule along with the Lord Jesus? Is it referring to that, or is it talking about the rule and reign in the New Jerusalem? You know, the details are not given. But there are future plans that God seems to have in his heart for us. It says here that we will also rule along with him. And in fact, it goes beyond that. It says in 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 3. Uh, what does it say over there? Someone can read out 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 3. Yeah, and I know there's a lot of other activity happening here, but someone can read out first Corinthians 6, verse 3. So we see over here that we are going to participate in ruling with Christ in some capacity. It even says that we will be judging the angels you know, uh, at some point of time. So there are eternal purposes that God has in his heart for us. And so even as we look at this whole topic of end times, this is what we are thinking of. That we have a future role in the end times and that we are actually working towards that. So we should be excited. We should be preparing ourselves, not just simply for second, for second coming, but also anticipating that when Jesus comes, there are, there's going to be more things for us to do. Not only will we just be rejoicing that he has come to collect us, we also will be given new roles and responsibilities. So we should be thinking of the end times in this perspective, where we are actively preparing ourselves today for what is ahead, for what is awaiting us in the future. Uh, so uh, maybe we can have someone read out Matthew chapter 25, verses 90. 21. Matthew 25, 19 to 20. Matthew chapter 25, I mean, maybe, maybe I got it wrong, but just cross check Matthew 25, 9, 25. Uh, 
All right, so here we see in this uh, parable that Jesus is going to say, is talking about certain things that will happen for us, for people in the end times. Uh, you know, he talks about uh, how in this parable, the man to whom a responsibility has been given, he says, you entrusted me with five bags of gold. See, I have gained five of gold. So you and I have been entrusted with certain things today. We may not think that what has been given into our hands is something very big. We may not appreciate the role that we have been given you know, right now. But the way we are fulfilling those little things that have been given to us today will have a great impact in the end times for us. So it's not just theory that we are looking at here. We are looking at something in which we also can play an active role. So it is. it would be wise on our part to really, uh, you know, uh, invest in what God has given us now to fulfill the things that have been uh, granted, you know, the responsibilities that have been granted to us to fulfill those now because God is watching and God says, you know, you have been faithful with a few things, I will put you in charge of many things. So in this current uh, phase of life that we are living in, some people may receive praise and appreciation and glory for what we are doing for the Lord. Others may be completely left unrecognized. Nobody may even know about them because they don't appear you know, on camera or they don't uh, appear on the stage. But God has seen what they are doing with the little that has been put into those hands, into their hands. And so he says that when the time comes, I will put you in charge of many things. Come and share your master's happiness. So we would literally be sharing in the joy of our Lord Jesus Christ, you know, in, in, in what he has given us and how we have used it. And now we will be ruling and reigning with him in some capacity. So this whole topic of end times is not just, you know, to satisfy our curiosity about, you know, when Antichrist will come and you know, uh, what, what kind of creatures will be released uh, out of the heavens. That's good. I mean, it's good to know those things because it's exciting to know about those things. But the ultimate goal is that you and I will have a role to play when it's all you know, said and done. And are we ready for that? Are we preparing for that? That little that has been put in our hands today, what are we doing with that? The giftings that we have been given, the responsibilities the Lord has given us towards his kingdom, towards the church. What are we doing with that? That is so important. So we look at this whole end times with anticipation, with eagerness, looking forward to, the, to that day when you and I will actually have a role to play. Because it talks about us judging the angels. Because we know that, right, it's been told that in the end times, the judge, uh, the, the angels will be judged. The ones who are locked right now, you know, the angels, we talked about that actually in the last class. Uh, how a large number of uh, you know, fallen angels are being chained and held you know, you know under arrest in the abyss right now even as we are speaking they are being held in the abyss for future judgment and believers are going to play a role in judging them i mean we didn't create them we had nothing to do with them but we are going to participate in that so this whole topic of end times is not just to satisfy our curiosity what are we doing with what has been placed in our hands what we are doing today has got eternal implications for our future. That is the future towards which we are working. So it's not just enough that you know, we build a house for ourselves and buy a car and you know establish our lives over here. There's a future that needs to be established. Are we preparing for that? You know, we need to think along those eternal lines because they're so important. So um, I just hope the you know the volume is now clear, the audio is clearer for you guys who are online. Um, can I have maybe some feedback from here so that someone can uh, explain to us whether it is all right at your end or not? I want to just say that
Pay attention uh, because you know I am trying my best from my side, and it would be really good if I could have the full cooperation of those who are not involved in the technical uh, side paying attention over here to what's being taught over here in the class. Okay, so, so if, if we could have someone read out the very first sign of the second coming, which is described Matthew 24 14. If someone could read out, please, Matthew 24 14. Okay, yeah. Nina says it's fine now. God bless you, Nina. So, yeah, it okay. Now that it's all resolved, if I can please have the attention of the students, uh, Matthew 24 14. If someone could please read out, it's just a scripture, harmless little scripture. If someone could read it. Well, there's really nothing much I can do, right? If I don't have the cooperation of the students. And this gospel of the kingdom will be preached 